Welcome. Yesterday's NBA news from the 12th of uh, July 2024. We had some extensions, some, well, NBA Cup news, some coaching news, and obviously the Summer League started, which I'll talk about in a separate video. So if you want to hear about Summer League, I'll release a video today about the Summer League games. Uh, I have not watched them all. I have just not had the time, but I uh, did catch up on all of them and I'll give give you the uh, television report on them as well as I can. So um, <laughs> if you want some better Summer League, obviously, uh, people quote unquote or Summer League videos, uh, you'll have to go check them out elsewhere. But I'll be bringing you all the news that you need at the end of the day still. And uh, let's start with the news. The biggest news of yesterday was uh, Jalen Brunson signing the four-year $156.5 million extension uh, with the New York Knicks, leaving over $100 million for the team to be able to retain its score over the course of these obviously four seasons. And it's kind of crazy, right? He's getting paid $20 million annually less, $20 million annually less than Bradley Beal, for example. But... I mean, it's still so much money that I love this, obviously, in terms of uh, team building. I hate this in terms of, uh, you know, money, in terms of uh, money's existence in a way, because obviously you're leaving those money for billionaires that don't care about shit in a way most of the time. And I'm just very anti-millionaire. Let me just put it that way. Uh, I'm not saying those people might have not deserved their money. In a way, I'm just saying no person on the planet ever needs this much money. Uh, but that, that that's just my perspective at the end of the day. That's just how I feel. Uh, you can have obviously a different opinion on that, but it's a really good selfless act for the team. Uh, Josh Hart already said they're pouring honey on Jalen Brunson, so <laughs> uh, great signing. Obviously, Jalen Brunson has emerged as a superstar, as one of, one of the best players in the league, in my opinion, even though obviously he does not fit the profile of that. Uh, averaged close to 29 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists on 48% shooting from the field, 40% from the 3-point line, 85 pretty much from the free throw line in 77 games in the regular season last season with the Knicks. Had himself a really, really good playoff run besides obviously getting injured at the end of the season where he even stepped all those statistics up besides obviously efficiency. And he'll make this next team dangerous for years to come, obviously. And we'll see when what extension he gets once this one, this one runs out. Uh, but a really great selfless moment from Jalen Brunson, nonetheless. Uh, KJ Martin is resigning, returning to the Philadelphia 76ers on a two-year, $16 million deal. He averaged close to four points, two rebounds, one assist on 54% shooting. 29% shooting from the three-point line, 54% shooting from the free throw line in 60 games with the Sixers last season. And he obviously uh, is more of a plug-and-play guy, can do at least a little bit of everything besides shooting. Defensively, he's a dog, so that's his biggest value. And, I mean, he could also be still a piece for uh, the Sixers to get a sign-and-trade or to include him as a salary filler in some deals if they were to make some with their picks, right? The speculations were about Dorian Finney-Smith and stuff, even though they signed Caleb Martin and it feels like the roster is set. It, it serves them well. It's a good deal for them nonetheless. So, KJ Martin back to the Sixers. Uh, Johnny Juzang returning to the Utah Jazz on a four-year $12 million deal. Played 20 games with the Jazz last season. Average about seven points, two rebounds, one assist on 46% shooting from the field, 42% percent shooting from the three-point line, 71 percent shooting from the free throw line, and he's another young guard in this Utah core, which, like, I keep repeating every time I talk about Utah, I just, I, I don't know, man, I, I just will ignore the Jazz, that, uh, let me put it that way, I just ignore them until they decide to do something logical, I hope some of these players pan out for sure, but, um, I don't know, it, something just feels so off about Utah. And it, I don't know. I'll, uh, let me just leave it there. Uh, Keaton Wallace, who played with the Summer League Hawks team right today, I think, has signed a two-way contract with the Atlanta Hawks. He played in the G League with the Clippers and the Hawks. 
had some exhibit 10 contracts, never got a chance to play in the league. So he's on a two-way with the Hawks as the guard. Maybe he'll get a chance to play, obviously, if, for example, Trae Young gets injured, which I don't wish on him, obviously. I'm just pointing that out as a possibility. So that's a, that, those are the deals for today. Then the NBA Cup groups for next seasons are official. We have obviously ABC groups for both East and the Western Conference, Eastern and the Western Conference. And I'll give you the uh, groups and talk a little bit about them. Group A in the East is the Charlotte Hornets, New York Knicks, Orlando Magic, Brooklyn Nets and Philadelphia 76ers. Seems like a really good group for the Sixers and the Magic and the Knicks. Uh... I mean, it usually will have at least you usually have at least three good teams, and obviously in the NBA Cup it will be a dog fight more so than not in a way because teams actually care. So it's not gonna be easy. I expect this to be between the Sixers, Knicks, and the Magic for two places. I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if two teams from this group obviously went through. Uh, then uh, Group B in the East it's the Bucks, the Heat, the Pacers, the Pistons, and the Raptors. Pistons and the Raptors, obviously the obvious two teams that you don't count on uh, to advance, but maybe obviously the Pistons and the Raptors will have more to play with. Maybe the young players will be juiced up for this. But the Bucks, the Heat, the Pacers are the obvious uh, contestants for the spots to uh, advance this early when we're talking about it, obviously in the middle of July. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Group C in the East is the easiest one. It's the Bulls, the Cavaliers, the Celtics, the Hawks, and the Wizards. Bulls, Hawks, Wizards, all young teams with something to prove in a way here. So uh, they will have fun in this in this group, but it will be between the Celtics and the Cavs most likely, uh, at least based on projections, of course. But though maybe we'll see them put up a good fight, right? Uh, maybe we'll see Alex Saar, Risha Shea, uh, Matas Buzelic, uh, put up great fights here, the rookies from this season class, uh, and obviously they have some still good players, so it, who knows, right, it's it's a cup, there are games, that these are essentially separate games, so who knows, but I'm just giving you the projections at the end of the day, right. Uh, as for the Western Conference, Group A is the Clippers, Kings, Rockets, Timberwolves, Trailblazers, uh, the Trailblazers are the team out, in the group right where you're not sure about them but then all the other four teams will be uh in this to win it so uh really exciting groups in the western conference overall group b is the lakers jazz spurs suns and thunder you would expect every team except the jazz to be in it but we'll see with the jazz who the fuck knows at the end of the day like i keep saying but the spurs with Wemby and chris paul should be more dangerous right uh, the spurs overall just should be more dangerous this season and in a you know, something that is for played for money, for advancement, right? It could be something for the Spurs to actually aim towards this season, right? As to, you know, make it at least that you're fighting for the playoffs and maybe even the in-season tournament, right? That would be a really good step for the Spurs and the next year competing for actual spot, uh, actual contention. Um, and Jazz, I mean, I mean, Lakers, Suns and Thunder should all be contending. So uh, obviously Lakers, the first winners of the NBA Cup last season. Uh, the group C is the uh, best group in the in the whole tournament. It's the Grizzlies who should be better. The Mavericks who were in the finals. The Nuggets who won the finals. Uh, obviously, prior to this season or the, the season before, uh, the Pelicans who should be better and the Golden State Warriors. So, on paper, the worst team in here might be the Warriors or the Pelicans. Obviously, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, that's a crazy group, and it will be really the group of death, death, as uh, it's like to be called whenever there are group situations in any sport, I would say. <laughs> so I'm excited for that. Uh, the Cup was a good addition last season, so hopefully it will continue. Then we had a really heartbreaking news. Darren Holmes, the second, tore his right Achilles tendon. He'll miss the entire season, or is expected to. He was the 22nd pick for the Denver Nuggets this season, had him himself a really good game today. Uh, 11 and 7, I'm pretty sure, uh, in 25 minutes, but it just sucks, right? Uh, you playing your first summer league game, you could be getting a chance to play with one of the best teams in the league, one of the best players in the league, and you tear, tear your Achilles, man. It's just gut branching. It has to fucking suck. And I hope he recovers as well as possible and crushes it next year. 
Uh, but that's just the reality of it. So, well, well wishes to Daryl Holmes. Uh, hope he bounces back as well as possible. Uh, then on to the head coaching news or the coaching coaching news. Luke Walton will be a head, a head assistant coach on JB Bickerstaff staff in Cleveland. Interesting hire, obviously. Luke Walton had himself some really bad head coaching stints with the Lakers. Did he get a chance somewhere else? I'm not sure, actually. Uh, maybe with the Kings, actually? He, was he with the Kings? I don't know, maybe, actually. I think so. Uh, and obviously, uh, was an uh, assistant for the Warriors, where he obviously won the title in 2015, did a good job for Kerry in 2016, then got the head coaching job with the Lakers. Uh, Dan Garriott is joining the New Orleans Pelican staff as assistant coach from Cleveland. Uh, and Kevin Burleson is joining as an assistant for the Piston, Pistons also, uh, which obviously, uh, I mean, obviously is also Luke Walton because he's joining obviously Bickerstaff staff in in Detroit. Pardon me, I'm not editing this out, honestly. <laughs> um, hope not enough people are interested in today's episode. Nah, uh, yeah, I, honest mistake, right? It happens. Uh, but yeah, coaching chances around these teams, so it makes sense. Uh, he's He was the head coach of the G League Crackers for the couple, past couple of seasons. And the Pistons, I'm really intrigued about the Pistons. I was last year, so hopefully this year they won't disappoint me. And to be fair, they, the first three games the Pistons played last season had me hopeful. So we'll see what happens this year. Uh, one of the trade rumors today was uh, that the Los Angeles Clippers are interested in Tyus Jones via sign and trade. Uh, he averaged 12 points, 3 rebounds, 7 assists on 49% shooting from the field, 41% from the 3-point line, 80% from the free throw line. Circa, obviously, in 66 games. You can see the actual stats on the screen with the Wizards, and that will be an interesting deal for the Clippers. We'll see what happens with Tyus Jones. He will more than likely depart from the Wizards via via, via, via the sign and trade, so we'll see where, which team that is. Then, international friendlies. We had a game of Serbia and France. Serbia won against France 79-67, to and France offense really struggled. It was a real pain to watch their offense. They were sped up, couldn't create good shots, straight away too much from Bambi, there was Rudy Gobert post-up, so that was nasty. Uh, obviously, Jokic was Jokic, Bogdanovic did really well, and the shooters from Serbia did really well, I thought, and they closed the game without Jokic, so they had some ice in their veins, and it was a fun Bambi jokic matchup, it was free, live-streamed on NBA's YouTube, I'm pretty sure, well, I'm pretty sure it was, but I'm not sure if there is an actual uh, uh, stream, like, you know, if you can watch it uh, now, when it was obviously uh, playback in a way, right, if it's on the YouTube channel, or if they just streamed it and they deleted it, I don't know, you can check that out if you want, but it was a fun game, international friendly, friendly obviously, to prepare for the Olympics that start in in a week, right, it's it's in a week, I'm pretty sure, uh, so there's that, then we had, we obviously have to talk about the WNBA, uh, because it's, I'm really enjoying WNBA this season, I can't lie, I've enjoyed it a bit last year, but this year with the new rookies and everything and the hype around it, I've been enjoying it even more. Uh, even though last year it was a really fun season nonetheless, but yeah, I mean, you grow and you open yourself up to more amazing things just like the WNBA is. As the Storm destroyed the Minnesota Lynx, Seattle Storm, uh, 91-63, to the final score, the Lynx without obviously Nafisha Collier, uh, had, had had themselves a rough time. Fe I'm not sure if it's Nafisha or Nafisa Collier, but uh, they had themselves a really rough, ta rough time. Uh, <clears throat> but they had themselves a really rough time offensively. The Storm, obviously, defensively, are a, a great team. And and I have a spelling error. I have them spelled as Strom, which means three in Czech Republic. So I'm sorry for that. Should have uh, checked that prior. But uh, but obviously Nika Ogwumaiki Nika but it was Nika Ogwumaiki uh, with twenty six seven and three. Hopefully I pronounced it right. I heard it. I tried my best. I'll try to improve on it because we'll be talking about her more and more. I would say because she's an incredible player. Twenty six point seven rebounds and three assists today to obviously destroy the links. 
10, we had the Indiana Fever defeat the Phoenix Mercury, 95 to 86. Uh, Caitlin Clark and Alia Boston show. Uh, Caitlin Clark had 20 points, 6 rebounds, 13 assists on 8 of 16 shooting from the field, while Leah Boston had 21 points, 13 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, 2 blocks on 10 of 17 shooting. Great game from those two. Great game for the Fever. Really great win. Caitlin Clark's passing is fucking incredible. Go watch those highlights if you uh, want to see some incredible passing. It's all over Twitter. I'm sure it's all over YouTube already. Or maybe I'll give you a clip here also. Um, and the Las Vegas Aces defeat the Atlanta Dream 84 to 70. Aja, unanimous MVP Wilson, uh, had 33 points, 18 rebounds, 1 assist, 3 steals, 5 blocks on 13 of 23 shooting from the field, 3 of 4 from the 3 point line. And she's just that. She's just, she's just her. She's just the best in the world at the end of the day. That's what she does. Uh, unanimous MVP, like I said. And the Las Vegas Summer League started, like I said, that will be a separate video where I'll try, try to put my thoughts into words, especially about, obviously, the number one pick and the number two pick, Risha, he Risha Shea and Alexander Saar, which uh, is the game I paid the most attention to, uh, that I watched in full. And go Barbara Krejčíková in the Wimbledon final. Go crush him, girl. It starts in fucking 15 minutes and I have to get ready for that. So thank you all for watching, thank you all for listening. And I'll catch you all with the Summer League video then tomorrow with the news, hopefully. As always, the guys just went to others. Uh, hey, stay empathetic, stay on the good side. There is no such a thing as a good side in a way, but uh, just stay empathetic. Uh, be kind to yourself and try to be kind to others. And yeah, just be.